So you talking to them? <laughs> hey, look, look. No, no, real shit. I'm about to do my hair like that. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. I know my shit. Wait, now. We'll talk later, right? Be easy. Give me the blueprint. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Porter. Yeah. Marcus Sage, Fight Up TV, Why Top by Stage the Front, VIP. Man, I, man, <laughs> wow. That's yeah. wild. Hey, hey, hey. Wild. <laughs> a, 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 little, a little five minute piece, man. I got to do y'all both at the same time. All right, come on, I do, man. I do, I do, I do. Marcos, you see that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, why. <laughs> Showtime. Showtime, Sean Porter, man. Uh, just giving Terrence Crawford some hair tips, bro. No, 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 huh? no, no, no. Um, I, I, I think he was serious though, but he, nah, he looked like serious. serious. <laughs> he, had some, he had some action underneath that dude. Man, he been, he been, he been, um, just, just, just a good dude, man. Uh, uh, as soon as he walked away, I said, "That's my guy." You know what I mean? That's, All right, Troy. That's how we get down, man. I, I, I did a show uh, a couple days ago. I said, "Man, I, I never we when we link, we don't, we never really talk boxing." You know what I mean? We, we might a little bit, but for the most part, man, we cut all that off, and it's just homeboy and homeboy. You know what I mean? Old well, school. What was the last uh, thing you beat Terrence at? Oh, hold on, don't do that. Oh, don't do you. that. Appreciate that. Thank no, you. Thank don't you. do that. <laughs> we we were so we were in Houston, and I was like, you know what? I asked him. I said, yo, you play pool? And you know, of course, he gave me the Terrence. Go, oh, of course. I said, man, you don't play no pool. Let's go get it in later. It rained all night, so we ended up not going to play pool. But that's probably the next thing I'm gonna challenge him in is, is some pool. So I'm a, I'm a decent pool player. I on? bet I bet he don't even know how to hold this thing. But he just, he good at everything. So in his mind, he's you know, he going to be all right. <laughs> Let's talk about the fights. Yeah. Uh, Super Bowl week, first off, Sean. Yeah. First time Super Bowl in Las Vegas, man. Um, we've got a big event, Tiafimo Lopez yeah. and Ortiz, Jermaine yeah. Ortiz yeah. on this Thursday, yeah. uh, right before the Super Bowl. Man, talk to us about the fight. Break it down a little bit. Listen, man, let me let me just real quick. The Super Bowl is in Las Vegas. You did a Thursday night fight. I, I truly, truly hope that um, top rank and everyone involved took advantage of the Super Bowl being here. You can't expect people to w drive past a, a billboard and think, oh, yeah, I'll go to that Thursday. I ain't got nothing else going on. They're going to go out and eat. They're going to go out and and kick it at a bar or something like that. You gotta give people a reason to be here. So, man, I'm crossing my fingers, hoping that they utilize the big event, the Super Bowl being here. All that being said, man, I think it's a really good fight to have during the, during the Super Bowl. You know, it's um, no, you ain't spend tons and tons of money on it. It's not that big of a fight, but it is. A, it's a great. It's a really good card, and uh, the main event is a fight that I think um, you know the casuals may not truly understand, but hopefully. The takeover has has took over, you know, enough of these casuals that they want to tune in. But man, at the end of the day, I do think that Jermaine Ortiz is going to challenge uh, Tiafimo. I just I look at both of them having, you know, the versatility. Both of them being athletic. Both of them being quick. Both of them having some pop. You know what I mean? I think it's going to be a fun. I think it's going to be it's going to be back and forth. I really don't think. I think it's going to be a lot of close rounds. And uh, those are the fights I like. What are your thoughts on? You know, Teofimo saying that he reached out to Devin, spoke to Devin, tried to make, you know, that fight for this weekend. And, you know, Devin kind of dismissed him, said, you know, go talk to well, I mean, the boss a little bit. Listen, man, um, Devin had just fought. What was that? No, that was December. They right. just fought in December. December you know what five. I mean? Um, I believe the talks were prior to him challenging me. I can't so imagine it. I, you know, hey, listen, man. At the end of the day. The manager has a has a plan, the promoter has a plan, and then the fighter has the plan. The fighter don't always get what he wants. Sometimes in the in, in the case of a Devin Haney or a Ryan Garcia or a Tank Davis, some of these guys have had the ability to really just call their own shots and do what they want to do. But for the most part, that doesn't happen in the boxing world. Usually it's the manager's plan that, 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 that really takes place or the promoter's plan that really takes place. So, you know, no matter what uh Tiafima was saying. Let's look at what 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 uh what what Mr. Bill Haney did. Mr. Bill went up to 140 and got a belt. He went up and got a belt against a guy that didn't have any feet, that did that lacked that lacked experience, um, that wasn't fast, and he knew he could get that belt. Was that wrong of him? Hell no. Would would you do that opposed to take on a fight like this, not knowing what you know? You you you. At the end of the day, you are playing against the Super Bowl. You know, people aren't coming until day of, or you know, because the, the tickets are expensive. The list goes on, so you still there's other obstacles. Why you want to use this this game to your advantage? There's still a lot of obstacles to get past. I don't think you could do 
a Tiafimo Lopez Devin Haney Thursday before the Super Bowl. Hell of an idea. I don't I per, I don't know the business that well to know if it would if it would work. But that fight wasn't that wasn't gonna be that wasn't what it was gonna be for Bill and and them. So you know, hey, we we hear you, T.O. But if you're being realistic, you probably knew the fight wasn't happening to. We talked about big obstacles. Uh, biggest obstacle for Tiafimo Lopez right now is clearly Jermaine Ortiz. Like you talked about before, Jermaine Ortiz fast, young, and strong. Um, isn't it a trip how we watch Tiafimo Lopez be the youngster and the new kid on the block, and now here comes another young, hungry guy yeah. looking to flip your card over? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. What do you? How does Tiafimo Lopez uh, turn back? Uh, Ortiz on fight night? I, you know, I think he, Tiafimo has to use his experience. He has to come to the ring understanding this is a 12 round fight, a 12 round war, and this guy hasn't been in a 12 round fight the way that I have with, with people like me, and he can't hold a candle to me. You know what I mean? You, you figure out what he wants to do, you make adjustments along the way, but you get your eyes set on 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th round. That's when I really turn it up and separate myself and show people that I'm the guy, you know? So to me, that's the that's the mindset of a champion. That's the mindset of an experienced warrior that, that understands, you know, this guy's young. These are, there's other things he's lagging that, that are gonna come into play on fight night. And I have to push those buttons. Experienced fighters know how to push those buttons. Sean, you recently went back and forth with uh, Javante Davis a little bit on Twitter after he saw, I believe you saying something about how you kind of understood why, um, something about Devin Haney and why that fight wasn't coming to play in the business aspect. Just I, I, yeah, I mean, I literally, I'm, I'm throwing your words in your face. After the Mario Barrios fight, you said, I'm not going back to 140. That cuts out every big fight at 140 until you're, he's ready to move up. If he ain't said he ain't, he, if he ain't say he's ready to move up, you know what I mean? I still, I think the Shakur Stevenson, t uh, Tank Davis fight is the uh, Tank fight. I don't, is the best fight to be made in boxing right now. Stylistically, um, the ticket sale, the whole nine, is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I really, I hate that that people would rather talk about Devin Haney and Tank at 140, not even realizing that that fight is just Tank said what it is. So you know, so I mean, he didn't. I guess uh, you know when your name is said. And it ain't, it ain't the things that you want heard, you know? You feel like you gotta say something back. You said something about that you know the business of boxing and for, you know, kind of, you kind of alluded to like, not wanting to give the public too, too much of kind of knowing the, what the business of boxing, just what, I mean, can you elaborate on that? This is, this is what I'll say about that. Um, I'm, I'm dangerous to boxing. I'm dangerous to boxing because number one, man, my faculties are straight. <laughs> and I can articulate everything that I know very well. And um, I had a dad who was a, a hard head, and, um, and he brought that to the sport of boxing. He learned it, and, uh, and he gave it all to me. You know, he, uh, <laughs> grace of God, he's still here. You know, but, you know, the way I move and operate now with my podcast and, and everything else that I do, I mean, you know, I could, I could really freeze up a lot of things that go on in this sport, and I don't because it's just not, that's not my, that's what, that, I'm not gonna get paid for freezing stuff. You know what I mean? Um, things that I see and how it moves, and I'll give you, I'll give you guys one, just so that you guys understand what I'm saying here. But basically, I don't want to mess up the business for any of these guys while they're doing their thing. It's not just because I know don't mean I'm supposed to do it so that everybody get a click. I don't do nothing for clicks. I do not do anything for clicks. So I'm not gonna mess up anybody's game, how they, they rhythm, how they do their thing. But I will say this, if we, if we rewind back to Bernard Hopkins pushing Bill Haney, Bill came in trying to run the game. And you can't run the game with somebody that knows the game. You can run it with other people, but you can't run that with Bernard. Bernard like, all right, you wanna be loud? You wanna make a scene? Here we go. I'm gonna push you. And Bernard didn't run away. Bernard walked away because he knows nothing's going to happen. You wanted this, so here it is. You wanted the show, I'll give you guys a show. And that's the game. So, you know, smoke and mirrors is what boxes is about. Thank you so much for watching this video. And make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV. And give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV, on Twitter, and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.